Good morning. God bless you. It's good to come together worshiping the Lord. And welcome to our visitors. It's good to have you here. And uh, let's just pray first. Heavenly Father, we come together this morning in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to worship you, to praise you, to honor the day of the resurrection and to have ears to hear from you, Lord. I just pray that our meditation be upon you, that you could minister to our hearts, that we, we change people as we leave this place. Lord, drawn closer to you, and I just ask that you will come by your Holy Spirit and minister to us this morning and ask these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's just sing a few songs just a little longer. Amen. Just a little longer. What's that? The wrong button. <laughs> Bring the old organ from home, then we don't have that problem. <laughs> Hang on. Have we got it? Just a little longer. Just a little longer, and the trump of God shall sound. Just there let's sing this one leave it there take your burdens to the lord and leave it there you know that's a commandment it's not a choice it's a commandment cast all your burden on him if the world from you is full of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with me Just remember in his word how he fed the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Oh, leave it there. 
chickens bail. Don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. He did make a way for you and will lead you safe through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it here. Leave it there. When your youthful days are gone and old age is creeping on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, he will never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Amen. Got another little hymn here. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Jesus paid it all. So no more debt to pay. <laughs> I hear the Savior say, Thy spring indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Hide in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, he was it white as Amen. Praise the Lord. I quite like to sing those old songs. Um, it reminds me of my old experience. <laughs> it reminds me of Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today and forever. I've got another one here. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. From 
Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross to be my glory ever till my wretched soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy now on me there the bright and morning star she it's me I did hear um, a, a uh, all call an altar call on the tape, and they were singing this song, and the woman could not help crying and crying all the way through, just getting a touch from the Lord. Isn't that wonderful when that happens? When you can meditate upon the Lord, when the Lord speaks to you, when He ministers to you, and when you surrender all to Him, it has that effect. Amen. Well, do we have any testimonies this morning? Testimonies or prayer requests? Um, my friend, um, Pastor, yeah. Yeah. And what's his name? No, just a friend. Just a friend. Just a friend. Amen. We can pray for that. Any other? Sanctuary and Peace Marine for the 12th 
great it even shows them that they do it so it's really difficult yeah and it's also some unspoken amen do we have any others brother chris Amen. It's just like you're not trying to rehearse something, you just simply talk to him about something and he he just comes in between us. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Amen. Can I ask Brother Emerson to commit your thanks to the Lord? Thank you. Amen. Does anyone have a song or a special on their hearts? You know, I always ask. Brother Chris. Okay, we can sing that one. The Lord is marching on and his army is ever strong. <clears throat> Thank you. 
March on to take the promised land. If you come into Christ, you are in the promised land, but you have to still fight the battle in there. Amen. I've got, uh, I have a maker. Let's sing this one. I have a And you know, like it says in Romans 8, oh, I'll read it. Um, when he calls you, then you, you, you know, you respond to the call. And uh, he, it says here, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to call. To conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. He knows our name, he calls us, and it says, And whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Why are we here? We heard the call. We heard the call in our lives, and that's such a blessing to know. My sheep will hear my voice. Amen. Let's sing another one. Um, let's sing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and Right and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you let's sing it to him
There are no words. There are no words. There are no words to tell you that I love. I think it's a daily thing, lamp trimming time. Daily, we have to trim the lights, <laughs> so we don't. Cr so we we make light, not smoke. <laughs> Amen. Just before you read the word of God, let's sing. Into Thy presence I come. You can sing, we come or I come. It's up to you. Into Thy presence I come. By the works I have done But by grace By grace Alone Into thy presence I come Into thy presence I come By the works I 
Stand, let's read uh, Matthew 22, verses 11 and 12. And the Bible says here, When the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. You may be seated. <coughs> So he was at the wedding and didn't have a wedding garment. He got in somehow. <laughs> That's interesting. He knew. He knew there was a wedding. And he knew guests were in the, invited. And he knew that there was free food and free everything. So he went there. But he didn't enter by the door. We know Jesus Christ is the door. He didn't enter the right way. He had all the right understanding of the wedding, but he didn't enter the right way. And when he was exposed, he was speechless. Don't know if he's ever been perplexed and speechless. When the Holy Ghost convicts you, something happens, you're speechless. You can't find an excuse. You just are rendered speechless. So this man was speechless. He went in the wrong way. So we know we need the wedding garment to go to the wedding. You ask a young bride who's getting married, you know, that's one of the first things. They look for a wedding garment even before they have been asked or proposed to. So, that, so we need a wedding garment. We know that. Especially the bride needs the white garment, the robe of righteousness, the Holy Spirit. That's what the bride of Christ needs. We have to be in that shape. We have to wear that wedding garment to go to the wedding. And how does it come about? I mean, we can have different uh, ways of saying it and they all have some merit you know some say the wedding garment is the word that's the wedding garment then we can say it's the robe of righteousness but how do you get the robe of righteousness by one spirit we are baptized into Christ that's when you get clothed with his righteousness and I believe when you have the Holy Ghost we are ready to go there but then we want to know about the husband we're marrying. We want to know about him. We, we find out more and more things. We read his word. We listen to, to messages. We, we want to know more about the one we're going to unite with. So the coming of the Lord is close at hand. And I believe we are in that time where we actually need to have that wedding garment. He has already prepared all things. Question is, are we prepared? Or oh, we can say, yeah, I know. I I believe this or I believe that. or we, we can have all sorts of things. But when he comes and we stand in the presence of God, unless we wear the robe of righteousness, we also be rendered speechless. I think it's so important to know where we at. Have we accepted him? Go with him wherever he takes us. Totally surrender to his will. You know, we can, we can serve the Lord in our own way without being totally surrendered to his will. That's the way I want to do it. That's the way I think is right. I can do that without being totally surrendered to his will. It's not a good place to be. You know, you can end up doing God a service without being his will. We know that. So, 
we need to have that wedding garment. I was listening, it, it was very interesting. I talked to Brother Chris before the meeting, and uh, he was telling me about the message he's been listening to. Uh, um, the, uh, what's it called? The Rising of the Sun, I think it was. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I listened to the same message this morning. And, you, you know, you hear different things. <laughs> you heard the old story. You give a, give a message to an evangelist, and he sees all the evangelistic things. And you give a message to a teacher, he sees all the teaching. And you give, you know, people have see different things in it. Not to not want to be ignored or placed above the other, but we have to see the whole counsel of God in a message like that. And what struck me personally, it was about talking about the mechanics and the dynamics. And the mechanics is when you know everything, when you know the word, but the mechanics, that's the mechanics. When you know the word, know where to place it, to understand everything, that's the mechanics. But the dynamics is when the Holy Ghost comes in and quickens that word so it becomes alive. So that's what I heard. And then he's, he, he was saying, oh, you know, you listen to tapes, you do this, you do the other, but do you have the dynamics? In his own church. And he said, you need it. So those who need the dynamics, stand up, raise your hands. And he said about two, three hundred. Two, three hundred who knew the word, had the mechanics, but didn't have the dynamics. And I don't have to explain to you what the difference is. And I mean, uh, without the dynamics, you're not going anywhere. You can have the most wonderful car completely fitted with the latest motor and everything, even petrol in a tank. And you can sit in it and look good in it, but you're not going anywhere because there's no spark. No spark, no dynamics. You're not going anywhere. And then you, you hear about people who have all dynamics and no mechanics. Then it's all over the place. True. You get people, they're not even Christians. They have some dy dynamics. That doesn't get you anywhere either. The wheels will fall off sooner or later. But we want the Holy Ghost anointing upon what we believe. Now, I heard the sister say once, she said, when I'm alone, dying of thirst in the desert, crawling in the sand, that's when I need to know the Lord myself, she said. <laughs> That's when I need to see the dynamics. When we are suffering and, and, and need healing, we want to see the dynamics. We don't want to say, I know the Lord is the healer. But then I'm not healed and basically say, well, he can heal me if he wants to. Like I shared the other week, this pastor, he, he was at a meeting and he was preaching and then he had to go to another meeting. He was in a rush and this man on crutches stood in the door and ask him, oh, can you pray for me? Oh, he was in a hurry. He didn't really have time. So he quickly said, uh, do you believe that God can heal you? And the man said, yes, I believe with all my heart. He said, do you believe he can heal you right now? And he said, yeah, I believe with all my heart. He can heal me right now. Be it unto you according to your word. He prayed for him and shut off. That man was healed, completely healed. And he said about three weeks later, a similar thing happened to him. He said the sister was uh, asking him for prayer. And he said, do you believe that God can heal you? Yes, if he wants to, she said. Yes, if he wants to. Do you believe that he can heal you right now? Yes, if he wants to. And then you said, be it according to your faith. And he wasn't healed. You see, the dynamics come when we get a hold of the word of God. 
He wants to heal you. He wants to give you the Holy Ghost. He wants us to live victoriously. That's his will. So it's not that if he wants to, he can give me the victory. No, he's given us the victory through Christ Jesus. You see, that's the point I'm trying to make. This, that is what I call the children's breed. To actually have the life of Christ in us and see it working. And not being a defeated church or not being troubled all the time and finding excuses and finding like-minded people who go through the same misery. No, let's move away from that. You know, you become <coughs> what you hang around with. You are. You hang around with negative people, you become negative. You hang around with positive people, you become more positive. You hang around with real Christians who have a manifestation of the Spirit of God, you have a, a more, a drawing, a better chance to get there yourself. But you see, sympathy is not victory. I said that before. We can sympathize with the flesh. We can sympathize with one another. You poor thing, you know, and all that. But that does not give you the victory. That does not trigger off the dynamics. What triggers it off? Go back to the Word of God. Yes, I've got it all right. I believe it correctly. I know this is the truth. Well, then just wait for the dynamics to step in. Say, Lord, help my unbelief. Come on the scene and heal me, or whatever it is. Come on the scene, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Come on the scene, take care of my problem here. Yeah, you know. I think we need the dynamics. And how do we get the dynamics? I know a lot of you have received the Holy Ghost, and I'm talking, not talking to those who already know, but it's good to, to remember Acts 5.32. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given them to them that obey him. So if you hear the word of God and you obey the word of God with all your heart, you're a candidate to get that quickening power. Absolutely true. There's another one. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The quickening power. Where was Peter before the quickening power? Denying the Lord, running away, being a wimp. Where was he after the quickening power? Making a stand, going out in the street, not fearing his long life to be taken from him. That was the quickening power. And here... Be baptized, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a promise to receive the quickening power. But many were baptized without true repentance. You know, repentance is also a revelation, a gift of God. It's absolutely what we need. Lord, show me how I look in your eyes. I know people have done that. Pray like that, and then shock horror came the next day. Well, I've done wrong there. You know, I'm a sinner. <laughs> you know, and some pray that, and the Lord says, You're my beloved child. I've paid the price for you. You belong to me. I've known you before the foundation of the world. You've always been mine. I had you on my mind. That's why I came to redeem you. You see, you may hear that. It's a good prayer. And then there's one other one. Luke eleven thirteen. If you, then being evil, that is, sinful by nature, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask, ask and continue to ask him? That's in the Amplified. Ask and continue to ask. You ask until you receive. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you, you have to get desperate with God. <laughs> you ask and continue to ask. So there are promises. Promises. So we're talking about wearing the wedding garment. If you wear the wedding garment, the bride of Christ becomes obvious. Obvious. I know uh, Brother Ian often says, I want to see the, the walk, not the talk. Isn't it? So some people have to walk at the talk perfectly all right, but not the walk. So the wedding garment should become obvious on the believer. Now, look, I know the word backwards and forward. I know uh, the mysteries. Uh, I know uh, serpent seed. I know the baptism in Jesus' name. I, I know Christ revealed in our day. I know, I know everything. But is that portraying the wedding garment? I think it should be obvious that our walk is with the Lord. We should not even have to explain anything. People should know that God is with you. You know, you know when, you, when the Lord is actually moving in you, it has an interesting effect. Some people feel drawn to you and some want, want to have nothing to do with you. That's really what happens. That, that's what happens. Now I'll give you just uh, um, a few uh, par partial quotes here. But just say, a garment that is, that is perfect love that enables us to love everyone. That's the wedding garment. And here it comes. And perfect love casteth out all fear. When perfect love has come into the human heart, all demons in hell will never be able to upset it. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Once you have the Holy Ghost, you're sealed by the Holy Ghost. Nothing can upset it. When you got perfect love, of God in your heart, you don't question God about anything. You don't question him. Lord, why didn't you do that? Lord, you knew this. And you see, his ways are so far above our ways. I was talking to my brother-in-law a couple of weeks ago, and uh, <coughs> he turned atheist. And he wanted to have a discussion. I could see, you know, he was sitting there and I, I was about to leave. But no, no, he wanted to talk. I think sometimes atheists are not so much atheists. They want to have, uh, they feel insecure. That's why they try to prove their point. That's what it is. But in the discussion, one thing came out that really <laughs> stopped them in the tracks. And that's what I'm trying to say. The scripture says his ways are so far higher than our ways. We don't even understand the thing. I said, look, you can explain this and try to explain that away. Explain, oh, that was uh, all rubbish here and just man translating. You can explain all sorts of things. And you can prove or disprove one or the other. But I said, do you really think that you know everything? How vast is the universe? All the stars and galaxies and everything, and they discover new stuff all the time. Discover. God allows them to see that far, but it goes for eternity. And God allows you to see that much, and you start to think you know everything. You're just a bird brain. That's all. Well, he actually brought it up again when I left. You know, he struck him. We don't know everything. We don't know everything. We have to believe by faith. We have to meet the one that is the eternal one, the creator of all things. And then we start to understand how great he is and how small we are. And then we, we're all struck. We worship him. And that's about all we can do. What can we do for him? I remember Susanna. <laughs> I don't know. She doesn't like that example. But when she was three years old, 
It was Daddy's birthday. Well, I want to give Daddy a present. What does a three-year-old girl have? She gave me her favorite undies. I mean, what, what can I do with that? And we gave it to her in the first place. But so is it with God. All we can do is obey him and love him and worship him. That's all we can do. You know, people go, say, well, I've done this. And I planted a church here and I planted a church there and, and I set up missionaries there and I sent Bibles overseas. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's good things. Do these things. But we can't take any credit for nothing. All we can say, praise God. Really. And then, when you got perfect love of God, we're talking about the Holy Ghost, the quickening power. When you got perfect love of God in your heart, you don't question God about anything. When the Bible said, I'm the Lord that heals all thy diseases, you say, Amen. Lord, that's right. That's me. I believe it. Sent the quickening power to make it real. You know, if I've, I've been in frustrating situations where I could not get healing, and I'm sure many of us have gone through that. And, you, you know, even the last moment you, you cry out to God, Lord, I believe, let it be, you know, and, and that quickening power doesn't seem to be there. Uh, as I said uh, many times before, three years ago, I was actually crippled, paralyzed, in one foot and uh, with a back injury. And I prayed because I was in agony. I prayed and I ate tablets, but it didn't do anything. I couldn't understand it, but I didn't blame God. I didn't say, God, you can hear me if you want to, but if you don't want to, you know, it's your business. You know, that's a stupid attitude. He may have greater things in mind. He may want you to, to, to go through things to draw you closer. Or, to, you know, sometimes people, uh, they say, well, oh, no, uh, I don't need God. I don't want to look up, you know, forget it. And then they're, they're struck on a sick bed. All they can do is look up and lie on their back, you know, and things can happen. But anyway, I couldn't understand it. I said, okay, God uh, ordained doctors as well and all these things. Uh, Lord, speak through the doctor to me if that's the way I have to go. And cut long story short, well, the doctor did all the scans and said, I've never seen it that bad before. I had such, my discs were totally out in two, three, four places. He said, I've never seen it that bad before. And at the operating table, that's when God spoke through the doctor. First, the anesthetist comes, pulls down his mask, telling me what he's going to do and that I end up with a sore throat maybe after and all these things. Then the doctor comes, pats me on the shoulder and says, how are you feeling? And I said, a little better. Feel great. Then he touched my knee, said, have you got feelings here? Have you got feelings there? Can you walk? So I got off the bed and walk through the room like this and then a serene atmosphere came into the room absolutely serene doctor didn't talk for quite quite a while then he turned his head sideways and said if i were you i would cancel this operation and i said i'll cancel at that moment i knew i was healed i felt as happy as healed you know, when you, get the, uh, when you get the Holy Ghost, it's like the down payment of what is to come. You get the, uh, what's the other word, the, uh, what's it called? Earnest. Earnest. Yeah, you, you, you have something. We have to promise. I knew I had it. I haven't seen it manifested, but three days later, I woke up completely healed. No more para paralysis. No more back pain, and a week later, I played a tennis tournament. I mean, what is it? It's the quickening power in action. It didn't come when I wanted it to come, but I still believed, and I didn't blame God. 
God is still God. He's almighty. He's the almighty. And I'm so happy to have an almighty God. So he says, I'm the Lord that heals all thy diseases. You say, amen. Lord, that's right. That's me. I believe it. Well, where is it? You know that blind man who went up for prayer and then uh, uh, you healed. He came up again the next day. He said, oh, I still, I'm still blind. Well, didn't you say you believed? You healed, I told you. Okay, he went back. And then a few weeks later, he was at the barber shop. And uh, the barber was teasing him. Oh, I heard you healed, you know, went to this meeting. Oh, wonderful. You, you can see. Isn't that nice? Teasing him. And he said, praise God, I'm healed. And his eyes opened. Right then and there, he kept on confessing the truth. And, you know, he's the high priest of our confession. And, you know, if you're honest with yourself, we're starting to confess sometimes the unbelief. Oh, well, mind you, I'm getting a bit older. It's quite normal to be a bit worn out and this and the other. You know, what about these people who had arthritis crippled? And you can take x-rays of it and, and no, you know, it's all seized up joints and growth and whatever they have. And they're instantly healed and jump around. Our God can do anything. Amen. Amen. So it's our attitude towards it. And here's another one. I am more convinced than ever in my life that it will take perfect love to enter that place. There was no jealousy, no tiredness, no sickness, no old age, no death, only supreme beauty and joy. Whatever you do, lay aside everything else until you get perfect love. Get to where you can love everybody even every enemy. Yeah. And you know, the Holy Ghost in you can do that. That's really what happens. That's the children's bread, I believe. Now, I'll just read you a couple of scriptures, uh, a few here. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. I love this one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual Blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we are already blessed. According as he has chosen us in him. When? Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According. What? To the good pleasure of his will it's his will he's chosen us because it's his will to the praise of the glory and grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved I really like that when you're accepted you don't have to worry you don't have you know it's like I said if the bride to be if she's been proposed, will you marry me? And you say yes, and he says yes, I want to marry you and plan the wedding. You have been accepted. You don't have to worry, oh, maybe I should do this now to be accepted. No, you have been accepted. And all the uh, um, interesting stuff comes later, but you've been accepted, really. And we have been accepted in the Beloved. Whoa. <laughs> now, who can take that away from you? No one. You've been there. You had this secret engagement or, or marriage thing. Nobody can take that away from you. You know, Bron and I, we were engaged before it was made public. <laughs> Nobody could take it away fr from us. I was prepared to go overseas for, for, for two, three years. Uh, if if that's what heaven would have required, and she was prepared to elope, <laughs> you know, you know, you made a deal. You don't 
have, have that taken away from you. And so is it in Christ. If he has come to you, you have received his Holy Ghost, you have received the Holy Spirit, the down payment, the earnest of your salvation, well, nobody can take it away from you. No nothing, no power, no nothing. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's quite a scripture. We, we, we read it quite often, and we, we know it, we sing it. But, you know, when you're saved by grace, how can you add anything to it? You can't. It's the grace of God that called you in the first place. I always say, when did God call you first? Where were you when he called you? In which church were you when he called you? No, you weren't even in church when he called you. Maybe in, in a dead church you could have been brought up that way. But when he calls you, he takes you out. He called me outside the pub. <laughs> outside the pub when I was in my worst state. He called me. Doesn't mean I was uh, looking perfect. But that call, when you can identify it with Romans, them, those he predestinated, them he also called. You can say, praise God, I'm predestinated, I'm his, he called me. So for by grace are you saved, through faith, you believe what he says, and that not of yourselves. How much can we do or add? Nothing. You know, we can say, oh, I take the word. I take the hook, line, and sinker. I take the word. That doesn't save you. It doesn't save you. It's great to believe the word. It's great. And we, we, ought, to, we ought to be a, a representation of Christ. So if you want to be like Christ, you want to be like him. And Christ is the word. So you want to walk as the word declares in his word, in the scripture. Otherwise, we're not a true representation. But salvation, to be saved, is by grace, through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now here it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Once a man boasts and tries to draw glory to himself, he's missing a lot. He's missing Ephesians 2.8, really. Or verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. All glory belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Spirit of truth cometh, he will glorify me. And I think it's so important that we hang on to these fundamentals and know, identify with them and say, yes, where's the dynamics? Where's the outworking? I want to see it in my life. The children's bread is Christ. All of it. Not part of, of him. All of it is our portion. All of Christ. I'll give you just uh, one or two more scriptures here. Philippians 4, 4 to 8. We know it very well. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Now listen to this one. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. We can have the peace of God. Even in, in a troublesome time. We live in a day with great trouble and tribulation. And worse to come. And people know it. And they haven't got a peace. They haven't got a peace. I just talked to somebody uh, the other day uh, out here. And, and, and this, this lady said, her husband, uh, he's so worked up. He hasn't got a peace. He, he gets so upset. And it lasts the whole day, you know. It just stays with him. He gets so upset about things. No peace. We have something the world hasn't got. 
a peace that pass all understanding. You can go be pounded by trouble, pounded by negative uh, messages and phone calls and, and all sorts, but you can go in the little chamber and have a peace unspeakable in the presence of God. It does not... Uh, it does not make sense, but we have that peace of God that passes all understanding. And then he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those things. You know, there are a lot of things we can do or uh, think it's a lot of fun, or entertain ourselves with, or whatever. But are those things true? Or is it just fake? Is it just something that's not true, and we get caught up in it? Or just for passing time? Or are those things honest? Are they just, or pure, or lovely? Or a good report? No, that's what we need to meditate upon. If you want to draw closer to God and see the quickening power at work, we have to allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. So our minds should not be caught up with other things which have absolutely no meaning. First Peter 1, 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fate is not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. To be revealed. What has to be revealed in the last time? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So we need to be manifested according to the word of God. Not as defeat the church or defeat the people but as people walking in the power and in the truth in the word of God you know when I was talking about the Chris of course there are people that they have miracles and power like I said uh, they haven't got the word how much more should we see the power of God if we have the revealed word the truth and know it we should see even more more than ever. Where's the dynamics? You know, I question myself sometimes. Well, you know, when I was lying in bed in agony and, and I couldn't find a place that didn't hurt, and I said, Lord, what is it? <laughs> you, know, you, you, you don't stop believing and you don't start blaming God, but you don't understand. You may have to say, Lord, I don't know it. All things are possible. You find when you when you first come to the Lord, your faith seems to be a bit different. It shouldn't be different later, but because it becomes childlike faith. You everything is new, spiritual, and you get excited about spiritual things. I was so excited about spiritual things, I was planning a trip to the hospital to have an operation on my foot. And I read in the Bible, God's my father. I thought, how stupid can you get? He's my father, just ask him. And I was healed. Simple faith in the supernatural. Now over the years, what we get is a lot more knowledge. I didn't have all that much knowledge at the time. I had faith. You can say I had, didn't have the perfect car but at least they had some dynamics. But now, with all the knowledge, knowledge is not a substitute of faith. See, that's a trap. 
we become so comfortable with knowing it all and know others that don't know it and we know more and we know it in a better way and we know it in the real way and, and we, we can look at past dynamics in operation. It does not replace faith. And Jesus said when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Plenty of knowledge. And I think it's, it's when all mysteries are revealed. We have the knowledge. But will he find faith? I want to walk in the faith and see the dynamics of God in my life. And I'll, I'll like to see it in everyone's life. And then it says here, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That doesn't change the program of God. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice. How? With joy unspeakable. Here again, that's our portion. Joy unspeakable. Not you know, not, not misery, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And just in closing, I have uh, uh, another one here. Luke 10, 20. Notwithstanding in, the, in this rejoice not that the Spirit's a subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We we'll always have reasons to rejoice. Whether we cast out demons or we, we, whether we not casting out demons, we have reasons to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I find this amazing. So we can rejoice. Some people say, oh, it's not the time to rejoice. It's not the time to this. There's serious stuff. No, there's always time to rejoice <laughs> in Christ. Amen. And Revelation 3, 5 says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. How wonderful. And the last one is John 16, 33. I've got it from the Amplified Bible. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the word in the sorry in the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration but be of good cheer take courage be confident certain undaunted for I have overcome the world I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. That's our Lord and Savior. Isn't that wonderful? So peace is the children's prey. Peace, joy. All these things are our inheritance. So let, let's not be deprived of these things. Let's rejoice in the Lord. Let's be Make business with God. Not make business with God. I mean, be completely in his hands and surrender and know he keeps us. It's, it's like a, if, if, a, if a woman marries a godly man, she can be feeling secure. He doesn't dump me the next day or, or, or whatever. No, he looks after me. Well, if I, if I get old and get wrinkly, he still looks after me. What about if I may end up in a wheelchair? He still loves me. He doesn't dump me. You know, man may do that, but God never does that. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the meditation upon your word and 
so wonderful that we have the word uh, made known to us and you revealed it to us and Lord when it's revealed it becomes dynamic in our lives I just pray that you will continue to reveal the word of God to us so it's not a mental understanding but a living experience that we can see the power of God in our lives Lord that we can go to the place where we can speak and it will be done according to our word because our words will then not be our words, but your word. I just pray that you would continue to move in our midst and in our lives and our hearts. Even as we leave this place, let us consider the greatness of yourself. And we just want to give you all praise and glory and worship and honor in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's just uh, sing. Um, um, a song. What have we got? Oh yeah, I've got one on the list. Don't lose your vision for Jesus. <clears throat> Don't lose your vision of Jesus. Keep your eyes Now, um, just a, a reminder again, uh, I wrote it for those who have maybe not seen the message. In two weeks, some of us going to Gisborne and meet up uh, with the church down there and have a bit of fellowship. It's not big, long meetings. Uh, it's uh, Saturday night, so we travel individually uh, to Gisborne on Saturday the 28th. Uh, the church pays for the motel, so we book you a motel unless you have a preference for another one. So that's free for the night. Then at, uh, at seven at night, we have a bit of sing-along at the church, just sort of casual fellowship and a bit of sing-along, maybe a few testimonies. Sunday morning is 10 o'clock meeting. Then there's church lunch there at the community hall. And at one o'clock, they have a short meeting and uh, we can sort of have another little fellowship time together and then we travel back. So if anyone who has not uh, replied, let me know so we can make the bookings because if you want a nice motel, the earlier you do it, the more of a chance you have to get a nice motel. All right, God bless you. Let's just sing, uh, uh, walk with me, Lord. Um, as we go. Walk with me, Lord. Oh, walk with me. Walk with me. Oh, I've been low. <laughs> it's too high for me. It's too high for most people. <laughs> walk with me, Lord. Oh, walk with me.
Here's my life.